Let's talk about um, the dam rescue in Brazil at the weekend. I mean, this has been probably the main story of the weekend. I mean, they're still trying to find survivors off this dam collapse triggered uh, this terrible mudslide. That's right. The Bra Brazilian daily O Globo is going with a photo gallery of some of the victims, those faces of the people who died in that mudslide in the southeastern city of Brumadinho. Most of them employees from the company Val, the iron ore company that was using the dam to store mining waste and mud from mining. The search is on, as I said, for hundreds more people who are still unaccounted for. Those rescue efforts also making the front page of the French business paper Les Echo, going with a picture there of the aftermath of that mudslide. I mean, it does seem the blame uh, very much um, being uh, pointed, or the finger of blame being pointed at uh, the mining company Vale, which is using this dam. That's right. The F Financial Times reminds us that this is the second mining disaster that this company Vale is, has been involved in. Three years ago, another dam containing mine waste in the region collapsed. Then it killed 19 people. It also comes at a time when the mining industry is trying to change its image, trying to change public perceptions that it is not destroying the environment. And this accident will do very little to help that cause. The Brazilian daily Folha de Sao Paulo is looking at the government's regulation of uh, mining companies, saying that mining companies frequently complain about the fines imposed on them for not following the rules. In reality, though, this writer says Brazil has a forgiveness industry where mining companies are not held responsible. This tragedy should be a wake-up call, first and foremost, to the president, Jair Bolsonaro, who, who, quote, dreams of loosening up regulation even more. Furthermore, the writer says, how can we say we learned from the first disaster if no one has been punished? Let's move to the Philippines um, for this next story. The Filipino papers after that bomb blast in a church there yesterday. That's right, making the front pages of pretty much all the main Filipino dailies today. Scores injured in those blasts during a mass on Sunday. You see images of the aftermath from the Philippine star there, quoting Rodrigo Duterte's government as saying that the, quote, godless criminals will be crushed and pursued to the end of the earth. A bit of discrepancy uh, about the actual death toll, uh, but you do see on the inquirer here, uh, noting that authorities are looking into terrorism as a possible cause uh, for that attack, which was claimed by the Islamic State group. Dipti's found um, quite a shocking piece in the French paper La Croix today. Looks at how Switzerland is exporting extremely toxic cigarettes to Africa. Yeah, this is uh, according to a report that came out earlier this month. A Swiss report revealing that tobacco companies in Switzerland are exporting cigarettes that are twice as high in nicotine to the African continent in all uh, in perfect legality. This, as the World Health Organization predicts, uh, that there'll be a four, there'll be 40 percent more smokers on the African continent between 2010 and 2025, uh, a perfect goldmine, if you like, for those tobacco companies, which explains why the Swiss companies are exporting these extremely, extremely harmful cigarettes. Let's go to the U.S. for the next story. A university professor has been fired over her comments of had an email sent to students. Yeah, it was a seemingly innocuous email that was sent to students and then leaked to pretty much the whole world, uh, sent by Megan, Megan Neely, an assistant professor at Duke University, who's actually since been fired. She basically in this email told students implicitly and then pretty much overtly to abstain from speaking Chinese with each other on campus, saying it could impact their future job opportunities. She... Uh, quoted her colleagues as saying they wanted to identify these Chinese speakers so that they could remember them if ever they applied for jobs, and this is why she was sending this email. It raised a lot of controversy because many saw it as being racially discriminating and others wondering if that language had been anything else, anything other than Chinese, would the reaction have been the same? Anyway, last year, Neely sent a similar email attacking students for speaking foreign languages in the break rooms. She's now been stood down, but who would have guessed an email uh, could be viewed so many times? Uh, it's actually been viewed over six million times on wow. the Chinese social media website Weibo be any good for us with it talking English uh, here at <laughs> France 24. Um, let's stay with the US for our final story. Uh, I saw the headline of this, but I'm intrigued to know <laughs> the exact details. Heartwarming story for you. A little boy found alive after two days alone in the woods. Yeah, this took place last week in North Carolina. His name is Casey Hathaway. He's just three years old. He wandered away from his grandma's yard uh, last week. A massive search ensued in the wooded remote area. Uh, thankfully, he was found a few days later after a tip about a crying boy. He was wet and cold, uh, but alive. And when asked how on earth did he survive without water and food for two days, he had this response, that he hung out with a bear for a couple of days. Oh. 
Um, okay. That's all we know. Winnie? Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> no, no, I think a real brown bear. Okay. <laughs> Ironically, his favorite cartoon is a Russian show, a Russian cartoon show about a little girl who lives in the woods with a father like bear who keeps her safe. Oh, well, what, a, what a lovely story. <laughs> nice and heartwarming for, for what is a Monday morning, a wet, damp Monday morning here in Paris. <laughs> Thanks, Deputy Deputy Laurel with the papers on France 24.